father. Is it over? At long last. No king rules forever, my son. I see. Only darkness before me. After a culminating battle in which the best forces of Azeroth faced off against the Lich King Arthas, we get this final scene after his Runeblade Frostmourne is shattered, and all of the souls he's captured over the years are released, and he's talking to the soul of his dead father, simply asking him if his nightmare is finally over. Generally, when a bad guy is killed at the end of his expansion, they don't have remorse over what they've done. They usually go down kicking and screaming, or out with a whimper but not asking if they can finally stop and rest. You see, Arthas is one of the most popular villains in the Warcraft series, and it's generally because his story is a tragic one, of a guy who just wanted to do the right thing, and was willing to do anything to do the right thing, only to fail anyway and become a villain. You see, Arthas as a boy, and even a young adult, was a very nice and kind-hearted man. The death of his horse Invincible greatly ate him up inside, since he died in an accident that entirely could have been avoided if Arthas wasn't being an idiot. Arthas was trying to race back home in a snowstorm on his favorite horse Invincible, and he wanted to do a really cool trick of jumping over a short ravine that he'd done a million times before. But the back hoof of Invincible slipped on some ice while they were going for the jump and caused them both to crash. And this crash completely tore up two of Invincible's legs to the point where it was either going to bleed to death before they could possibly get help, or freeze to death. Either way, Invincible was done for. There was really only one option for him. Despite the fact that he broke some of his ribs in the fall, and his face and limbs were numb from the cold, he somehow managed to move himself closer to his dying horse. This is all my fault. I deserve this, Arthas said as he removed his sword from his hilt. Invincible regarded him very calmly almost as if he knew what had to be done, and accepted his fate. That caused Arthas's eyes to tear up, but he blinked them away, pulled out his sword, and then pierced his heart with a single blow. Then he collapsed. Some time later, some people found him and helped him bury his horse. And it's at this point where he thought to himself, should anyone else ever need protection, or if sacrifices had to be made for the welfare of others, he would do whatever it takes. And it's this mantra that led him down the dark path which would be his ruin. As sometime later, when the Cult of the Dam started spreading the plague throughout his kingdom, Arthas was chasing down Kel'Thuzad and had gone through dozens of villages which had been infected by the plague. So he knew exactly what was going to happen, and how almost impossible it was to change anything. So when he came to a city which had already been infected by the plague, he made the tough decision to cull the entire city before it could spread any further. When Uther came, he didn't know much about the plague yet. He wasn't an expert on what it did to people or how fast it spread like Arthas was. And he knew what he was asking didn't seem reasonable to people who didn't have the same information he had. It wasn't possible to explain to him and then convince him of what was going on. So instead, he ordered his men to work with him and dismissed Uther who was doing nothing but slowing him down. So he went into the city with his men and started purging the city. He knew it had to be done he was killing people now who were already doomed to be turned into the undead anyway, and he was going to save countless others by stopping the spread of the infection. But a part of him just couldn't handle it. He was a nice person, so having to exterminate an entire city of people just wouldn't sit well with him no matter how justified it was in his mind. And that's why he lost the ability to control the light during the Purge of Stratholme. You see, the light in World of Warcraft doesn't necessarily belong to people who are good and do the right thing. The light can be used by people who strongly believe in whatever it is they're doing. That's why the Scarlet Crusade can use the light, even though they're all a bunch of crazy lunatics who kill people because they think they might turn into the undead in the future, or they might be an undead in disguise. The light doesn't abandon the Scarlet Crusade members. In fact, some of them are so well versed in the light that there's one who's able to canonically bring people back to life, and another who was able to use the light even when they were undead and turned into a death knight. So, if Arthas truly believed in what he was doing, he wouldn't have lost the ability to use the light during the calling of Strathholm. But he just couldn't help doubting himself, even if he had convinced himself to do it anyway. That's why he was desperate for power when chasing down Malganus and Northrend afterwards. Malganus was taunting Arthas to go into Northrend, in order to pick up the Frostmourne. And since Arthas had already gone so far anyway, 
and he thought Melganus was behind everything, he was easily tricked into finding the blade and picking it up, where he then immediately struck down the Dreadlord. You see, I like to think of Arthas as two separate people. The one before he took up the Frostborn, and the one afterwards. The one before was someone who just wanted to save his people. So he was doing lots of morally gray things because in his mind, the ends justify the means. And after he picked up the sword, his personality got twisted and turned and he was a much different person who had goals that no longer aligned with his past self, but still had all of the memories from the previous Arthas. The post-Frostmourne Arthas had goals of freeing the Lich King from the Legion's control, and then afterwards its goals were a little bit more self-oriented, of freeing himself from Ner'zhul's control and getting the world ready for an eventual Legion invasion. Since both the Frostmourne and the Helm of Domination were very powerful artifacts that belonged to the Legion, and they were very much going to want them back someday. This new Arthas knew he could basically end all life on Azeroth whenever he wanted, since he had an unstoppable undead army who only grew in strength every time he clashed with the new kingdom. If he wanted to, he could just let loose all of his undead hordes in order to turn everyone else undead, and then he would have his whole army set in stone, and he would simply just prepare for the eventual Legion invasion. Although he never did let his undead loose to turn the entire world undead. He could have at basically any point, there were undead basically everywhere and they replenished their own forces. But he just never did for some reason. And it's later on that we learn it's because a part of Arthas from before the Frostborn was holding him back the entire time. There was a small part of him which had the personality of the original Arthas, and it kind of just put some mental blocks on him to act in certain ways, which didn't end the world immediately. When you do eventually kill Arthas, you find that he kept Jaina's locket on him the entire time. And Jaina even says herself that there was probably a small part of Arthas inside the monster he turned into. And I think these two things are some of the best examples of a theory that Arthas was kind of trapped inside the Lich King in some way after he took up the Frostmourne. And I have two possible explanations for how this might have happened. For one, it could have been more literal in that the original Arthas was trapped inside, and he just watched as the monster did everything using his memories and body. And the second one is that Arthas himself was doing everything, the Frostmourne did corrupt him and didn't create a second personality, but that his old personality simply conflicted with his new one, which made him act in odd ways momentarily, like keeping Jaina's locket and not immediately ending all life on Azeroth. I mean, he did plan on doing it eventually, but the fact that he didn't do it immediately was heavily hinted because of a small part of him that was trying to keep himself in control as his plan during the Wrath of Lich King expansion was to train up the strongest unstoppable fighters and then have them come to a citadel where he would test them, and then kill them and raise them as his personal bodyguard, the vetted best possible warriors for his new undead army that he would use to fight the Legion. And I think this second theory is a little bit more likely, because it doesn't seem like there was an original Arthas trapped inside his body, since the Lich King did cut out his own heart in order to rid himself of his human side, which is found by players through a quest chain in Ice Crown, which culminates with Tyrion destroying the heart and weakening the Lich King. So if there was a part of Arthas trapped inside of him, his heart would have definitely been it and he got rid of that. Which is why it's more likely that the Curse of the Frostmourne corrupted his mind, made him want to do all of these things, and was kind of like a forced magical mind control type situation. Or you know, a standard personality curse. And that's why when the Frostmourne was destroyed, and his forced personality curse was lifted, he was able to show remorse, and realize the nightmare he had just lived through, which he willingly did himself, and then was glad that it was finally all over. But unfortunately, only darkness waited before him, because even if he was finally free from his living nightmare, he was the one who ultimately made all the decisions that led him to getting tricked into becoming the Lich King in the first place. He didn't have to chase Malganus down to Northrend, Chasing Malganus in Northrend was more of an obsession than it was something he needed to do, as he never actually went back to Lordaeron to talk to his dad and better prepare them for the plague. He thought he could end everything on his own if he just stopped Malganus in Northrend. He could have taken time to explain the calling of Strathholm to Uther better, or even come up with a more reasonable plan for dealing with it, and he could not have been so efficient at killing things after becoming the Lich King. The only thing he really held back on was the not literally killing everybody thing. But even with his mistakes, it's not really fair to blame what eventually happened to him, having his personality twisted and corrupted, when he had good intentions the entire time. There's this old saying, we judge ourselves based on our intentions, and others based on their actions. 
Arthas' intentions were always good, even if he was a little bit too obsessed with Malganus. He was only obsessed because he thought killing him would fix the problem quickly. But he was also very pissed at what Malganus had made him do with Stratholme, that his obsession is kind of reasonable if you really think about it. He had someone who he knew was responsible for the death of an entire city, plus a whole bunch of small neighboring towns. And since he cared about his people greatly, and since he had a mantra to protect people no matter what it took, it was kind of inevitable. When Arthas found the rune blade and he was told that it was cursed, he had the mantra that he was willing to sacrifice anything for the welfare of others. And he'd be selfish not to sacrifice himself after what he'd done to Stratholme. So he picked up the blade and made the worst decision of his life. Because it all made sense for him to do that, and there was almost no way he wouldn't based on his intentions and personal mantra. It's almost tragic in a sense. His actions ultimately ended up being so evil to the point where no one considers Arthas a good person at lore. Everyone knows that he took up the cursed blade and killed a bunch of people, but everything in his life kind of led to that, as well as forces outside of his control directly manipulating him into that decision. Ultimately, he did make the decision himself, but it was always from a place of good. He wanted to do the right thing. He was willing to sacrifice himself in order to do the right thing. He just didn't know he was being tricked. He didn't know he'd be mind control and cursed to willingly end his kingdom himself, as he marched into Lordaeron and killed his own father with the cursed blade. He then went on to kill many, many more people, including 90% of the High Elves, and had planned on killing everyone else eventually so that he could prepare himself to fight the Legion. Not because he thought defeating the Legion would be a good thing, but because as the Lich King Arthas, the Legion was also a threat to him, as the person in charge of the Legion could cleave his planet in half. And there's not much an unstoppable army of undead can do about your planet literally being destroyed. So, did Arthas actually do anything wrong? You might say his actions point to yes, but in context and taking his intentions into account. He was never trying to do the wrong thing, and his intentions absolutely matter in these kinds of situations. And you can't really blame Arthas for something a cursed blade forced him to do. So, of the Lich King, the whole of it, the Helm of Domination, the Rune Blade, Ner'zhul, they were absolutely bad dudes who did bad things for selfish reasons. And Arthas was just kind of caught up in all of it because he was tricked. And it really all depends on how much one can blame a person who was tricked into doing bad things. So if we go based off purely intentions, excluding cursed mind control shenanigans, no. I don't think Arthas was in the wrong. But if you look at his actions and what he accomplished, ignoring all of the context, then he is without a doubt one of the most evil people in lore. So it's all up to you to draw your own conclusions, because Arthas did nothing wrong.